in the Supreme Court of Tennessee. The opinion of the court was delivered by William M. Barker, Chief Justice. On January 28, 1999, AMH was born. Shortly after the birth, the mother told the Mid-South counselor that AMH was not to be placed for adoption. On February 24, 1999, when AMH was four weeks old, the parents went to juvenile court and explained that they could not afford to care for AMH and wanted temporary foster care. Rather than contacting the Department of Children's Services, the juvenile court officer telephoned Mid-South, which agreed to provide three months of foster care for AMH. That same day, the parents entered into an interim care agreement with Mid-South that specifically stated that the agreement did not terminate parental rights. AMH was placed in the foster care home of the Appleys, Jerry L. Baker and Louise K. Baker, the couple now seeking the termination of parental rights and the adoption of AMH. After placing AMH with the Bakers, the parents visited her regularly in the Bakers home, consistently bringing food and gifts and taking photographs at every visit. Because their financial condition was not improving, the parents decided to send AMH to China to have relatives care for her temporarily. On June 4, 1999, Mid-South's attorney went with the Bakers and the parents of AMH to the juvenile court of Shelby County to obtain a consent order transferring custody of AMH to the Bakers. The mother was told that the order would enable the Bakers to obtain health insurance for AMH. The Bakers testified that as part of the custody agreement, the parents agreed that the Bakers would raise AMH until she was 18 years old. Contrary to the Bakers' testimony, the juvenile court officer testified that the mother was fairly adamant that at some point she wanted her child back. The juvenile court interpreter, Pastor Kenny Yao, testified that the mother understood the agreement to be temporary and for the purpose of obtaining medical insurance for AMH. After the consent order was signed on June 4, 1999, Mrs. Baker began keeping notes after each weekly visit by the parents. Her first entry was on June 5, 1999, when she wrote, Gain custody on June 4, 1999. She documented the date, the exact time of arrival, and the time of departure of the parents after every visit. She documented the gifts the parents brought such as food, formula, diapers, and books and the acts of the parents, noting if they were attentive to AMH or engaged in what she considered misconduct such as giving the baby inappropriate things like a small necklace. On October 3, 1999, the parents asked the Bakers if they could take AMH out for the day on the next Sunday. The Bakers refused, and the mother began crying. Mrs. Baker's notes for that visit include the following. We would like to get visits to every other week. We felt like they would wean away, but the last two visits we could see Casey the mother is wanting to come or. If Jack the father confronts us with a visit we are going to tell him this is the way it's going to be and set rules for him. He is very pushy and overbearing. The juvenile court officer testified that during this time period, the parents contacted her several times complaining about their visitation arrangement and expressing their desire to regain custody of AMH. In November of 1999, when AMH was 10 months old, the father of AMH asked Mr. Baker to return AMH to the parents' custody. Mr. Baker responded that he and Mrs. Baker did not want to return AMH and told the father not to mention his request to Mrs. Baker because she was pregnant. Mr. Baker also stated that he would hold the father responsible if Mrs. Baker had a miscarriage because she was worried about the custody situation. On May 3, 2000, the parents went to the juvenile court of Shelby County and signed a petition alleging a change in circumstances and seeking custody of AMH. Mr. The Bakers contacted Mid-South's attorney to represent them at the custody hearing and to pursue the termination of the parents' rights to AMH. The father told the referee that they planned to send their daughter to China to live with relatives. After briefly questioning the father, the referee denied the petition. Upon Mid-South's attorney's advice, the Bakers did not file a petition to terminate parental rights at this time. The parents continued to visit their daughter at the Baker's home despite the increase in animosity between the parties. During that period, the father began working in Georgia and could not attend all of the visits with AMH. On August 1, 2000, after the mother refused Mrs. Baker's request that she leave one of these visits by a certain time, the police were called. After this incident, the father quit his job in Georgia because he feared their visitation with AMH was in jeopardy. Prior to January 28, 2001, AMH's second birthday, the parents requested to take their daughter for a family picture. 
they invited the Bakers to go with them and made an appointment at a photography studio. When the parents arrived with their son at the Baker's home, they were told AMH could not go because she was sick. The father testified to the following. I said, I won't, not today, I won't leave here. Until we have picture made, I won't leave here. The police were called, and the officer told the parents not to return to the Baker's house or they would be arrested. The Baker's answers to interrogatory state that the parents were instructed by the police not to return to the home of the Baker's. On February 15, 2001, 18 days after their last visit with AMH, the parents sent a letter to the juvenile court and to the media setting forth the history of the case and stating that they wanted AMH returned so that they could return to China. The father testified that they went to juvenile court twice between February and April. On April 9, 2001, the court officer prepared a petition to regain custody for the parents. On June 6, 2001, the parents appeared in juvenile court for the hearing on their custody petition. Had the matter been heard that day as scheduled, the four-month period required for statutory abandonment would not have run. The hearing was rescheduled. The parents appeared for the rescheduled hearing on June 22, 2001. The father testified, we went there on time, actually, we went there before 8 o'clock, my wife and I. We were very eager. We went there. We were ready to have the hearing, and we thought we could have our child back that day. However, two days previously which was four months and five days after the parents' last visit with AMH, the Bakers had filed a petition for adoption and termination of parental rights in Chancery Court. Consequently, rather than hear the modification of the custody petition, the Juvenile Court transferred the custody case to Chancery Court. The father testified, of course, my heart was broken. The filing of the petition for adoption and termination of parental rights by the Bakers began Chancery Court proceedings that would span 32 months and generate a technical record containing 11 volumes of motions, responses, and orders. The grounds alleged in the original petition seeking termination of the parents' rights were the parents' abandonment of AMH by willfully failing to visit and the parents' abandonment of AMH by willfully failing to support the child financially. On February 7, 2002, Upon the guardian ad litem's motion, the Chancery Court ordered the parents to surrender AMH's passport to the court and, upon the Baker's motion, ordered the parents to pay $15,000 to the court for the guardian ad litem's fees, the DNA test, and the costs of the psychological evaluations. The father testified that it was impossible for the parents to pay the ordered $15,000 in just fees, especially after the Baker's attorney subpoenaed us and all the local Chinese restaurants and my wife lost her job as a waitress. None of the witnesses could explain why the court ordered that the parents have no contact with their daughter. The guardian ad litem testified that she had read a book about Chinese girls being placed in orphanages and consequently was concerned that the parents wanted to return to China. The Chancery Court found that the parents willfully abandoned AMH by failing to visit or provide support for the four months immediately preceding the filing of the Baker's petition to terminate parental rights. The court concluded that it would be in AMH's best interest to terminate parental rights and allow her to remain with the Bakers. The Court of Appeals reversed the Chancery Court's ruling that the parents had abandoned AMH and willfully failing to support her. However, the Court of Appeals affirmed the termination based on the parents' willful failure to visit their daughter for four months and held that termination was in the best interest of AMH. Where, as here, the parents' visits with their child have resulted in enmity between the parties and where the parents redirect their efforts at maintaining a parent-child relationship to the courts the evidence does not support a willful failure to visit is a ground for abandonment. Therefore, we hold that there has been no willful abandonment and reverse the termination of parental rights. Accordingly, the petition for adoption and termination of parental rights is dismissed. This evidence overwhelmingly shows that the parents' voluntary relinquishment of custody was entered as a temporary measure to provide health insurance for AMH with the full intent that custody would be returned. Therefore, we hold that the parents of AMH did not voluntarily transfer custody and guardianship of AMH to the Bakers with knowledge of the consequences and, therefore, are entitled to superior rights to custody. Here, the only evidence of substantial harm arises from the delay caused by the protracted litigation and the failure of the court system to protect the parent-child relationship throughout the proceedings. 
evidence that AMH will be harmed from a change in custody because she has lived and bonded with the Bakers cannot constitute the substantial harm required to prevent the parents from regaining custody. The evidence at trial showed that the parents have overcome many obstacles to achieve financial stability and are ably taking care of their other two children. We conclude that physical custody of AMH must be returned to the parents. In re-adoption of AMH, 215 SW3D793.